Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hop Pole Studios here and today we're going to be looking at a little thing that I talk about in my Ultimate Reaper course which is the big nine hour kind of ultra comprehensive um, tutorial series all about how to get Reaper set up, get mixing and learn all the technical side of things enough to get up and running with some serious chops. Today we're going to be looking at uh, how to set up Reaper's playback engine, which I know is uh, a Pro Tools term, but we're going to be looking at Reaper's equivalent of that. Now here's a mix that I've been working on and everything is set up for my system. I'm using an RME Radat as my interface, which is actually a card that's plugged into the computer, but that's largely speaking irrelevant to how to set up Reaper. I'm on Windows as well and there are only a couple of differences between Windows and Mac OS in terms of the setup. Most of it is practically the same. So where you're going to look for all your playback engine type stuff is in the top right hand corner. If you look up here, for me you'll see 44.1 kilohertz, that's what I'm set to right now. 24 bit wave, which is what my record settings are, which is actually a different thing. Uh, then it says I've got 36 channels in, 36 out. 128 samples of latency, which late the samples is something we can play with. And then it gives me a number for how long it takes for sound to get in and then get out again. And it says that I'm using ACO. So if I click on this, that's a nice shortcut into the preferences and brings me up a nice big window with all of our settings. So in Windows, there are several options that you can use. Generally, for your audio system, you want to be using ACO. That's the system designed by Steinberg, who make Cubase. And on Windows, it's generally one of the more reliable systems if you're not using Pro Tools HD and even Pro Tools uses ACO now if you're using the native version. So, from there, if you have your interface and you've plugged it in, generally speaking, you need to install drivers for that from the website for whoever makes your interface, whether that's Focusrite, Audion, RME, whoever that may be. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't need to install drivers. I plug it in and it just works. Uh, on Mac OS, that can be the case, but generally I highly advise go to the website, find downloads, get drivers, because their website for whoever makes it will have the most up-to-date little program. The drivers are the thing behind the scenes that makes your interface talk to Reaper in the most efficient way so that the computer can get on with what it's supposed to be doing. When that's installed, the list with ACO drivers will come up here. The only one I have installed right now is ACO Hammerfall DSP, but on some computers that I have, I have a real long list for different manufacturers where I've used stuff from Arturia, Focusrite, Audient, all of those, they're all in there. And you need to pick the relevant one for your interface. Beyond that, you choose your inputs and outputs. Now, if you only need two inputs and outputs, you can actually choose to start at say one and end at two. But then if you do that, then when you come to record later on and you find that you want to use input three and it's not available in Reaper, that's why. It's always worth referring back to this because sometimes if your computer's had a heavy restart for whatever reason, system update, sometimes things get reset. So it's worth looking here just to check. Now, below that, you can tick a box to request a sample rate. So if you know you're going to work at 48 kilohertz or 96K or 44.1, you can put that number in here with a tick box. When you hit apply, uh, Reaper will ask your interface, can we do this? Can we please use this sample rate? Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no, sometimes this won't when you hit update, when you hit OK. Sometimes that won't change the sample rate. And when it doesn't, that's because the interface you have, for whatever reason, is being stubborn. There may be a setting in 
the configuration which we're about to look at or a button on the interface or a switch that you need to set for that to happen. Uh, some of them can do it automatically, some can only do it in certain circumstances. Whatever the case, don't panic. There will always be a way to change it. It just may be that you need to look in the next part of the software. So let's open this back up again. The next thing is request block size, and that's to do with latency and buffers. Uh, the higher the buffer number, generally, the easier the computer can cope with what you're asking of it, but at the cost of a delay between when sound enters the microphone and comes back out of the headphones or the speakers. And so generally that goes in powers of two. What that means is you'll see sample rates there, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and so on. Uh, if you times it by two every time, you get the next number. So you can tick this to request a particular block size and again, if your interface supports that, it will do some negotiating, it'll take a couple of seconds, and we'll go from there. If not, what you might have to do is have this window open, and then find usually in the system tray, or same on macOS, uh, a button maybe in control panel, that in my case is this Hammerfall DSP settings where I then change the buffer size here, can change the sample rate here, and this will change everything. Uh, there is a button here in Reaper for ACO configuration. When I click that, that brings up this window, and sometimes with interfaces, that is a nice shortcut that works. Sometimes that doesn't work, and it's usually a driver thing. It's not usually the fault of Reaper. That also happens in other programs, but it's a nice shortcut that you can start to change what you need to change. One last thing that's worth noting is, let's just find a load of audio on screen. And so I've got all this audio. Whenever we go out of Reaper or go into this configuration, there we go. So when it says audio device closed, it says that all these files are offline. I wanted to mention this, don't panic. That's perfectly normal. All that's telling you is that Reaper is currently not using the audio interface. It's Reaper itself that's offline. The files aren't missing. Your files haven't gone anywhere. All you have to do is click inside of Reaper on anywhere that you want to be, and then Reaper goes, oh, me, you mean me, we're on, let's carry on. It picks up the audio interface, it goes online, and it goes. This can be quite useful because when Reaper's offline, generally, it uses a lot less CPU, uh, which means if you've got something else you need the computer to do momentarily that needs a lot of power, you can click away from Reaper, do the important thing you need to do, click back, and it will then dedicate all the processing time that you need back to that. And that's the other reason that you have to click on that little thing in the corner to change all your settings because then that will disconnect uh, anything that's currently moving. It's like putting in the clutch on a car, disengaging the engine so you can change gears. If you didn't do that, there'd be a horrible grinding noise. I've seen much older systems than Reaper where you would change all the settings and the speakers would go boof and horrible noises would happen and because the system was not disengaged momentarily while you change things, it could cause awful, awful noises and you would have to habitually turn off the speakers or put a system on mute while you change things. Luckily that's changing recently that a lot of systems have relays and automatic switching and Reaper can handle a lot of that for you quite gracefully, but it's good to know that that's a possibility and keep an eye out. But yeah, whenever Reaper goes offline like that, don't panic. I hope you found this useful. Uh, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide where I go through not only this, but loads of topics for about nine hours worth of content where we go right from setting up Reaper, installing separate plugins and how that works, 
and going through all this, the facets and making it work for you. Then we go through actually recording audio and then recording MIDI and manipulating both with plugins. We talk about what the specific plugins do. We start getting fancy with things like sidechain compression, which is another video that you'll see on this channel. So uh, if you found this really useful, do check that out through the link in the description below. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.